Yo, peeps, so let's take a look at some of the variables involved in this thing called uniform circular motion. Okay, well, first of all, to get force centripetal, we recognize that it takes the, uh, takes the format of F net equals MA. In fact, centripetal force is a net force, so that kind of works. Um, mass times centripetal acceleration will give us centripetal force. Um, so here's the part that I'm just going to give you. And certainly you can do your own research online in your text to find out how this occurs. Uh, it uses something called the small angle approximation. We really don't need to get into the derivation theory part of this. The result is what we're going to be using. And that is that centripetal acceleration equals V tangential squared over the radius. Okay, so the radius, which is uh, from the object that has the tangential velocity to the center of the circle, right? And if we wanted to use angular quantities, we could consider this omega squared times r, the radius as well. All right, so Fc is the result of other physical forces that create it. So it's a net force. Um, it's always the result of something like was discussed in, <clears throat> in another video regarding the physical forces like uh, friction or tension or the gravitational force or the normal force, etc. Okay, um, because uniform circular motion is periodic, meaning that once again a revolution will occur at a consistent uh, interval of time. So the time that it takes to create one revolution around is the same. <clears throat> so when that is true, we get this that v tangential is equal to the circumference over the period. So circumference is the distance of uh, one revolution around over the period, which is the time it takes to complete one revolution. All right, so what we have here um, is 2 pi r over the period t. We also can note that frequency, which is how many times something occurs per second, the unit is hertz, um, is 1 over the period. So if you take that value of the period, how long it takes to complete one thing, in this case one revolution, and you take the inverse of that, 1 over period, that's the frequency, which again says how often it occurs per second. Happens a second. Hz is the, uh, the unit is hertz, but often it's abbreviated Hc. So that's what it is. V tangential is 2 pi times the radius times the frequency. You can use either one if you have either um, of the information over here. If you have a period, you can use this. If you have frequency, you use this. Or you could easily transfer between the two with this very, very simple relationship. Frequency is 1 over period. So... If we have periodic motion over here, what we can do is evolve these equations a little bit further um, so that we can take a look at them in terms of the period or in terms of frequency instead of V tangential. So here we go. Centripetal force is mass times V tangential squared over R. So V tangential, as we saw here, was 2 pi R over T. I'm going to substitute that in. Boom. 2 pi R over t. Now this is squared because of v tangential squared, so this whole thing gets squared and the t gets squared. And so what we have here is m4 pi squared r over t squared. Notice we had an r squared in the numerator and an r down here in the denominator from that one. And so one of them cancels and we have this left over. Um, if we do the same thing for with frequency, we get this m4 pi squared r. This is this f is lowercase f. I tried my best to like make it a little squiggly. It is a lowercase f, so it represents frequency and not force, so just be aware of that. I'll try to mention that each time. So let's take a look at a couple scenarios. With constant mass and radius, as the period t increases, well, that means as this increases, the centripetal force decreases. Okay, so longer period means less um, centripetal force. With constant mass and radius as frequency, this is as curvy f is frequency, increases then fc increases. Well, we can see that here, certainly, that it's not only proportional to f, it's proportional f squared. So it really goes up as frequency goes up, okay? So as frequency uh, rises, so does force centripetal. And then lastly, with mass and period uh, or frequency, oh, constant, yep, period or frequency constant, as R increases, FC increases as well, okay? So we have um, this constant or this constant 
or this constant. And we're looking at the radius. Radius is proportional to um, the uh, centripetal force. Now, that's kind of counterintuitive because if we look, we say, well, wait a minute, radius is in the denominator. Wouldn't this go down? The conditions, though, are keeping frequency or time constant. And if you do that, you're actually, by changing the radius, you're changing the circumference, and therefore your velocity would not be the same. And so that's the thing. V tangential would change if you hold these constant but change the radius. Okay, So that's how that occurs. All right, so some variables, some relationships for uniform circular motion. And that ends this video. There are a few more to watch. Morad, out.